Hey everybody, it's Gomletx, and welcome to the Marching Machine Arena Open Day 1 event. Arena Opens are the most competitive non-qualification events on Arena, with a hefty entry fee of 5,000 gems or 25,000 gold, and no real rewards during Day 1. However, if you can make it through to Day 2 and win a ton of matches then, you could win up to 2,000 US dollars. Today's event is going to be Best of 1 March of the Machine Sealed, where we need to win 7 games before 3 losses to make it to Day 2. If we make it through Day 2, we'll start with a Best of 3 Booster Draft. If we win that draft, we'll follow it up with a second Best of 3 Booster Draft where the cash prizes are on the line. So that's everything you need to know about the event. So without further ado, let's bust open these packs and see what we get to build today. Alright, so we'll start off with a look at our rares and mythics. These tend to be the cards that will take us in the clearest paths, in the clearest directions, especially in March the Machine Sealed. So let's see what we've got here. We've got Heliod the Radiant Dawn, not the most exciting card ever. It is pretty good on the back half, but having to spend 4 to cast this and another 3 or 4 mana to flip it later means it just takes too long to turn into that backside to be super good, and it's a lot of a mana investment, so unless you're consistently returning an enchantment with the Enter the Battlefield effect, not a particularly good card, not really a reason to head into white. We've got Hoarding Broodlord as our next rare. This is significantly better. With Convoke, this can be cast for a lot less than 8 mana relatively frequently, and it's a 7-6 flyer that then gets to search your library for the second best card in your deck, and uh, exile it face down, you can cast it as long as it remains exiled. So that means that uh, even if the Hoarding Broodlord dies, you're guaranteed to draw the next best bomb in your deck. So Broodlord is pretty absurd, pretty big reason to try to play black. We've got Tribute to the World Tree, not super playable in sealed. It's almost impossible to end up heavy enough in a single color to play a triple colored card like this. That's three green mana to get it on the board. So just too restrictive of a mana cost to be very exciting. Same problem with Vorinclex, where the mana cost is the big hindrance. This is an eight mana card. It has to have really, really big impact for it to be worth that. And while it does do some fun things, doubling up your mana and locking out some of your opponent's mana, by the time you've cast an eight mana spell, mana is a little bit less relevant. You probably aren't getting too much value off of doubling off your mana or too much value off of locking out your opponent's lands. That's kind of the point of game. The point of the game where each player is just top decking and uh, playing a land every now and then just casting whatever they draw into. So Vorinclex just not high enough impact for that eight mana entry fee to be super exciting. We then have Invasion of Ikoria. This card can be good if you have some really high power creatures to search for out of your library. It's basically an additional copy of whatever bomb creature you want to search for that costs two additional mana. So if we wanted to search for a brooding, uh, hoarding broodlord, then it would be like 10 mana to do that, so that'd be pretty difficult. But if we have a cheaper bomb like Hitetsugu and Kairi, then it'd be seven mana to put a Hitetsugu and Kairi into play. And if we ever manage to flip this battle, it is pretty much going to win the game on the spot if they don't have the removal for Zalortha, because that is eight power that we can assign combat damage with as though it weren't blocked. So even if our opponent blocks with 50 creatures, we can guarantee deal eight damage to them. And it gives that ability to all of our non-humans, which means basically every time I've seen Zalortha flipped, if it isn't immediately killed, it's just an attack for lethal the turn after it flips guaranteed. Next up is Hitetsugu and Kairi, 5 mana for a 5-4 flyer, it's got some good card draw, and when it dies you get to make your opponent lose a bunch of life, pretty much no matter what, sometimes even cast a spell for free, probably the second strongest rare we have so far, probably tied with Broodlord, I would say Broodlord is our best, or Kairi's our best, maybe Hitetsugu and Kairi's the best rare, Broodlord is number 2, Invasion of Ikoria is number 3, right now. I don't think Invasion of Ikoria is super duper incredibly powerful, but there's enough good cards to tutor for that it does end up being uh, pretty solid. The big flaw with this, of course, as I said before, being that extra two man you're spending does mean this is going to be a very expensive card the vast majority of the time. Next up, we have Umori the Collector. Not really a bomb, but a very solid addition to any green or black deck, just a four mana four or five 
that can reduce the cost of some of your future spells. So pretty solid for the mana cost. Nothing that really feels like it's going to super change the course of the game that much, that dramatically, but it is well overstatted for the mana cost. So fits into your 40 card deck very nicely. Not a card you want to try to companion though. So great card if we're in green or black. And last but not least, we have Kogla and Yadaro. Makes us want to try to play red-green pretty badly. This is probably tied with Hidetsugu and Kairi for the strongest rare. Uh, this Broodlord and um, Hidetsugu and Kairi are our best rares for sure. Six mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. When it enters the battlefield, it can get Trample and Haste till end of turn if you're trying to just kill your opponent immediately. Or the ability you're going to choose a lot more often is that it can fight a creature you don't control. So six mana for a 7-7 seven, seven that also blows up your opponent's best creature is a very good deal. It's got some extra flexibility as well. If you really need to blow up an artifact or enchantment, then you can basically cycle them to do that. Shuffle them back into your deck, draw a card, blow up an artifact or enchantment for four um, by uh, discarding from their hand and doing that. So pretty good, pretty flexible card. This is definitely a sealed pool that's going to be highly dependent on what we have at common and uncommon because our playable rares are too, too spread out color-wise to really be able to play all of them unless we have incredible mana fixing in this sealed pool. These are all the rares that I like. In order of how strong they are, it's probably something like this. Number one down to number five. So let's see. However, with the color distribution, Umori... Umori makes this great, because if we go blue-black, we get Hitsugun Kairi, Broodlord, and Umori. If we go red-green, we get Invasion of Ikoria, Koglen, Yadaro, and Umori. I think that's Hitsugun Kairi plus Broodlord, a little stronger than Kogla plus Invasion of Ikoria, so we'd like to lean in that direction. But uh, if we don't have a lot of good commons and uncommons in blue and black, we could certainly just back up plan, play a good red-green deck here. So blue-black or red-green, very good places to go if we have the support in those color pairs. Unless there's some really bad stuff in those colors and some really good stuff in different colors, I don't really see bucking that trend and playing something other than those two archetypes. Again, unless we just have incredible mana fixing somehow to play all of these rares, but that feels pretty, uh, pretty unlikely. So we'll start off by looking at our multicolored and our colorless cards to see what we do have for mana fixing, as well as see if there are any other reasons to play certain color pairs. So in colorless, we have Kite Sail and Urn of Godfire. That's really not a lot. Urn of Godfire is a very slow mana fixer. You have to spend two mana to get one mana out of it, turning your mana into different colors. So it's pretty bad mana fixing. That's also pretty bad removal, six mana to use it as removal after the initial one man investment so it kind of adds up to seven mana total not the best card ever not exciting as removal not exciting as mana fixing but if we're really low on both of those things we could run it so colorless cards i don't think either of these are particularly likely to make our deck when it comes to mana fixing again just an urn of godfire is pretty bad and then we have thornwood falls and bloodfell caves and that is it one green blue dual lands and one black red dual land so the mana fixing is looking pretty scarce in this sealed pool when it comes to non-basic lands and colorless mana fixing but who knows green is a color with a lot of mana fixing maybe we can find a lot of it there so let's look at all of our non-rare multicolored cards see if any of these look powerful enough to push us in a specific direction Starting off, Invasion of Xerox is just a fine card if we are in blue-white. Furia is just a fine card if we're white-black. Invasion of Amonkhet is strong enough to uh, push us a little farther towards blue-black, so we would really like to play blue-black with Invasion of Am Amonkhet alongside Hidetsugu and Kairi and the Broodlord and Umori. A lot of good stuff it looks like towards blue-black. This is just yet another powerful blue-black gold card. It's good on the front half of the battle. Having each player mill three and your opponent discard a card and you draw a card, that's the big part. Your opponent discards a card, you draw a card. Pretty good amount of card advantage there. Plus, if you do flip this battle, it becomes absurd. You've just milled each player quite a few cards, so there's likely to be something with a decent ability to turn your Lazatep convert into, make it a 4-4 flyer, or 
um, God forbid, a 4-4 flyer that puts a 1-1 onto the board when it enters the battlefield. There's a lot of good cards to copy with Convert. Sometimes you even just copy a bomb with a great ability like a Hoarding Broodlord. All of a sudden your Convert hits the board and you get to search your library for any card. So Invasion of Amonkhet's a huge overperformer in the format. It's our best non-rare multicolored card, pretty much guaranteed. Uh, Agar's fine if you have a ton of burn spells, not a huge reason to push that way. Stormclaw Rager, again, good for the Rakdos Sack deck, but not a huge reason to push that way. Vatkeeper, probably our second best of these multicolored cards so far. Three mana for a 3 3 plus a 2 2 Incubator, and it can potentially double up the counters on any Incubators we flip in the future if we pay the, um, the overinflated mana cost there, the five mana to transform them. So, pretty good card. Two bodies off of one if we can uh, pay that extra mana later. Geoderm's fine if you have a ton of battles, um, but again, not super exciting. I guess if we're already heading into red-green for Kogel and Yadaro, it would definitely fit into the deck. Rayav could be good for an equipment deck, but would take a lot to push us to be a red-white equipment deck over just a blue-black or red-green bomb deck. Uh, there's Ashana, which is pretty filler, Invasion of Pyrulia is pretty filler, and Mutagen Connoisseur is pretty filler. So, biggest thing to keep track of here is Invasion of Amonkhet. That's just our best non-rare multicolored card, and it also pushes us to blue-black, so we'd like to try pretty hard to head in that direction. So, we're going to take a look at all of our individual colors now, see what colors look the best. Fingers crossed for blue and black, but we'll start with white, because that is the only color that is not overlapping with any of our rares and mythics that we want to play. So we'll see if we can just write it off immediately, or if there's a particularly big reason to be in the color because of our commons and uncommons. All right, looks like we can probably write it off. Two copies of Norn's Inquisitor is very powerful, but that looks like pretty much all we have going for our white. We don't have any enchantments to go with the Heliod, so the Heliod ends up being pretty... Uh, Pretty mediocre, just a 4 mana 4-4 four, four that we could turn into a 4-6. Uh, we've got some okay commons, like Double Cavalier and Knight of the New Coalition, but I don't love Billy Rider that much, don't love these equipment too much, although I guess they go with our Rayab if we went to a red-white deck. Scroll Shift is super filler. Cut Short is the only removal spell we have. It's a little bit narrow. And then there's one Angelic Intervention. It's like an okay color. If we had a big reason to be there, like a white-black rare or a white-blue rare, some kind of gold multicolored rare or something. But so with just two Norns Inquisitors, the only exciting thing going on in the color, I think we can probably write it off with our rares in the other colors. Check out our blue now. Not in love with it. If I'm entirely honest, we have decent interaction. We've got Nafar's Dispersal as a really efficient bounce spell, and then a Stasis Field as kind of a mediocre pacifism style effect, but you gotta use whatever you open up in Sealed, so we'll take it as a removal spell. So Dispersal and Stasis Field for interaction. Eyes of Cataxis for a very good value creature. We can use Invasion of Vryn to dig pretty far through our library looking for our bombs. We've got some Expedition Lookouts to clutter up the board in the early game slow things down and give us time to hit our big late game plays. Order of the Mirror is very filler. Cryptomancer is good at protecting bombs later in the game. And then not too much else. I don't think we're going to have a lot of creatures to convoke this squadron super well, so I'm not super excited about that. Nor do I think we're going to have a ton of transformed permanents for the whelp. Even if we did, this is at best 4 mana for a 3-2 flyer that draws a card when it dies, which is okay. That is solid. That is similar to the... Uh, one of the commons from Dominar United that was pretty okay. Uh, however, that's at best. Sometimes you pay 4 mana, get a 3-2 flyer, and it doesn't even draw you a card when it dies. It's really bad in those circumstances, so I'd ideally have a lot more flip cards in this. We currently have two. We have one Incubator and one Order of the Mirror. I guess we have one battle that we might flip, but if we ever flip the Mage Ring, we're not going to have it just sitting on the board. We would use it to copy a spell probably as quickly as possible. So the whelps really don't look that good, um, but we probably need them to fill out the creature curve. Um, and then wingspan, probably not great if our creature count stays pretty low. So certainly some awkward things about our blue, but we'll take a look at our black now. 
And we have similar issues in black. Yeah, this is going to be kind of a difficult way, difficult sealed pool to play blue-black in because we're going to have very few creatures. Like if we put both colors together and cut zero creatures, this is all we have here. I guess if our black removal is particularly good, that could help out, but our blue removal isn't really great. It's just okay. We've got two pieces of it, two pieces of interaction. Uh, Corrupted Conviction is going to be unplayable with this low of a creature count. Battle Fan as well. Combat Tricks are just not going to work. We do have okay removal. We've got a Final Flourish. We've got a Vanquish the Weak. And we've got a Failed Conversion. I like Final Flourish a lot. Vanquish the Weak and Failed Conversion are both a lot more filler. But again, in Sealed, you use the removal you got. Take what you can get. Don't think Glistening Deluge is super main deckable. Unsealed and Acropolis definitely is. This can dig for our bombs and put them back in our hand later in the game. Uh, Render Inert could be fine if we play a lot of battles. We know we're going to play a blue battle and Invasion of Amonkhet at least. And this can kill a Incubator token on our opponent's board and draw a card if they end up flipping a decently sized Phyrexian. We could play Traumatic Revelation just to up that creature count as well as potentially rip some bombs out of our opponent's hands. Not a card I'm generally super high on that I pick super highly in draft, but again, sealed is the format. You play what you can get, and Traumatic Revelation is what we've got when it comes to getting some more potential creatures, some four mana 3-3s three basically, to add to the deck. Etched Familiar and Consuming Aetherborn are both unexciting, but they are filler creatures, and we would need to up the creature count so we'd keep them, and we'd keep the Broodlord for certain as a great rare so there's definitely some flaws to this blue black deck very low on the creature counts but the upside is that we get a lot of our most powerful cards in the entire sealed pool we get to play hitatsugu and kairi as well as invasion of amonkhet as well as hoarding broodlord and uh, umori the collector is not bad either looking at the creature count we do up it to 12 by putting the multicolored cards in here which isn't terrible although we cut the squadron like I wanted to. That is 11 creatures, two of which are Oculus Whelps, which I don't think look very good in here. But uh, yeah, I guess that's 11 creatures, two traumatic revelations potentially, four mana 3-3s. Three we can probably play the lower creature count here. We also have Eyes of Gataxius as another creature. 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, that's actually starting to get pretty reasonable. Uh, definitely cut like the change the equation, probably the wingspan again with this creature counts. And then this would be our blue black deck. It doesn't look great. Doesn't look great. If our red green is a super consistent deck that has a really good curve and a lot of good removal, I think we'll go with that. However, if red green has similar problems, then this is the color with the bombier higher impact plays. Because the two rares here are a little bit better than the two rares in the other deck. Umori's going to be in both. Um, and then Invasion of Amonkhet's a really good uncommon versus the um, the Rampaging Geoderm for red-green just being kind of okay. So kind of interested in that. I'll save this deck here in case red-green doesn't work out so I don't have to completely rebuild that. I will look over it again and make sure everything's perfect if we do end up going with blue-black. Uh, but this way... If we take a look at red and green, and uh, they also don't pan out super well, I can just pull that deck back open and start editing it from there. So let's take a look at red now. Ooh, I like that volcanic spite. like the Beamtown beat stick as well, and we actually have a lot of creatures here. That being said, some of these creatures are certainly cuts. Scrap Tromper theoretically works well with like Beamtown beat stick when we make a bunch of treasures, but... If we ever don't have that on board, this is incredibly low impact. A 1 1's not really going to affect combat pretty much at all. So it's kind of like just an artifact that sits there and waits till really late in the game to sack lands, which is pretty bad. Depth Guard is super bad if you don't have a ton of equipment or backup abilities. We have one potential backup ability and one potential equipment. Don't think we'll be playing Depth Guard because I also don't think I'm playing Great Sword. Card has just been too slow. Unfortunately, I thought it looked pretty decent at first if you're a deck with a ton of little 1-1s that can invoke it out really easily, and then you start making your 1-1s 4-2s with Trample one at a time, but uh, it hasn't worked well in those decks, and this isn't even that kind of deck. We don't have a ton of ways to convoke it or a ton of cheap creatures to make better with it, so not the most excited about that. 
Uh, we've got Invasion of Mercadia, which is really good if you can flip it, so we'll definitely be playing Red Green Rampaging Geoderm trying to flip that thing. It's okay even if you can't, it's a thrill of possibility, discard a card, draw two. We've got the Spell Spear, which is pretty good at attacking battles. Um, Artisan's nice and aggressive, Scrounger's fine, Slasher's fine, Branch Burner's fine. A bunch of fine red stuff. As for green, we have this Tribute to the World Tree. We can't really play. Vorinclex just doesn't do enough at such a high mana cost. I do think the curve looks a little bit better here. Um, we want to cut Fertilid's Favor, Tribute to the World Tree, Vorinclex. We're going to put our multicolored cards in here now. Well, our red-green cards. We will play the Geoderm, play the Umori, and play the Kogla and Yadaro. This is 42 cards in this deck right now. We move these up here so that it all scrunches together because it added the companion slot. I like that we have more creatures now. We've got two two-drop creatures, three three-drops. Still not a lot. Still not a good curve for sure. Adaptation's a fine combat trick if that creature count stays high. It's at 16 right now. Plus the Tangled Skyline, basically 17. Cut the Atraxas Fall here, it's a little too narrow main deck. And probably cuts uh, maybe the Adaptation or maybe one creature here. So... Our removal is pretty equivalent. We have a Shatter the Source, a Cosmic Hunger, and a Volcanic Spite. Versus we had a Vanquish the Weak, a Failed Conversion. The 2 mana minus 2 minus 2 trick, the Final Flourish. So we had 3 removal spells in black. In red green we have 3 removal spells total. But in blue black we had 3 removal spells, a Bounce spell in blue, and a Pacifism in blue. So we actually have five removal spells for the blue-black deck to make up for the lower creature count, which kind of balances that out a little bit. How much better is that blue-black card quality here? Let's see. How filler are some of the creatures that we're running? They're not the worst ever. None of these are tremendously filler. I guess Bonded Herd Beast kind of is, but we can just cut that as the final cut. Sure. We've got better big stuff to do like Branch Burner and Kogul and Yudaro. Yeah, we still don't have an excellent curve of two three drop creatures. Got a lot of four mana stuff. We get kind of cluttered up at that cost, which can be difficult. Double Escort to be able to pick up Kogul and Yudaro makes us pretty resilient in the late game if we hit Kogul and Yudaro. However, the Escort's pretty slow without, like, a good bomb. If I'm just using it to pick up a Hanger Scrounger or something that's traded off early, it's really not that good. So it is a very under-costed or under-statted creature. 3-3 three, three for 5 mana. Got some big stuff like Tangled Skyline to help with that, though. I've only got two invasions to go with Rampaging Geoderm. Just a f I guess worst case scenario, it's like a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four Trample Haste, because it can always just give itself plus one plus one until end of turn. And yeah, that's still fine, even if it's not always attacking battles. This deck looks super fine. A little more consistent mana curve-wise, for sure. But we're definitely down a bit on card quality, I would say. I think the removal's a little better here, but there's less of it. Like, the interaction's a little better but there are fewer pieces of interaction the bombs are certainly worse like Koglin yadaro equivalent to hitatsugu and kairi but invasion of ikoria if you think of it this way our blue black deck both of these decks have umori which isn't really a bomb it's just a good statted creature at four mana um so the two that are competing are Koglin Yadaro plus Invasion of Ikoria versus Hidetsugu and Kairi and the Large Convoke Dragon. 
And the large Convoke Dragon is basically Invasion of Ikoria, but it comes with a 7-6 flyer immediately instead of having to kill the battle to get your 8-8 eight, eight out of it. Because we spend our 8 mana or Convoke it for much cheaper, we get the 7-6 flyer on the board, and we can just search out whatever we would have put into play with Invasion of Ikoria. So we can still get the two cards out of it. We get a 7-6 immediately, and then another bomb afterwards. Whereas with this, we get the other bomb immediately, but then we have to put in a lot of work to get this to flip. I suppose with Koglin Yadaro, I mean, I ever make it to 8 mana, I always pick that up, fight something to try to clear the board, and if I just hit it one time with Koglin Yadaro, they do flip it, and then we pretty much insta-win. A lot of 4 drops... A 6 and a 7 here, although this one can Convoke. Invasion of Ikoria is basically an 8 mana play. We might want to run 18 lands here. I guess I have a potential Treasure Token Producer. I have a Mana Dork as well. Umori can make creatures cost 1 less. That doesn't help Invasion of Ikoria. It doesn't help our 8 drop. I'm pretty much never going to choose battles with Umori. We have 2 battles in the whole deck. Pretty much always choosing creatures to reduce the cost of. Yeah, I could definitely cut like one creature to uh, get another land in this deck. Play an 18 land build. Although I guess Invasion of Mercadia can help as well. Discard a creature early, draw two cards, digging for more land. Kami and Beatstick are very obviously helping. I think I want to remove one of these four mana cards. Hermit can be pretty slow to flip. You have to spend 5 mana to flip it. All you do is give it plus 1 plus 1, but you do get to buff your next attacking creature alongside it. Slasher's probably worse than that. Kavu's definitely better. Converter Beast is definitely better. Mori's definitely better, and Geoderm's definitely better. These are our two worst 4 mana creatures, I would say. I feel like Slasher's probably the worst of them. With two battles in the deck. It's a 4 mana, 4, 3 menace. And that's a out it most of the time the other thing is that we have two battles in the whole deck we have two spells that can just kill a battle without even having to attack it the shatter the source and the cosmic hunger can both if we have a six power creature on board just well the shadow source can just straight up do six to either battle and flip it the cosmic hunger if we have a six power creature on board can just boop a battle volcanic spike can do three to a battle i guess hunger can pretty consistently flip the Invasion of Mercadia. Yeah, I probably have just like instant sorceries to finish off the last few damage to a battle. Uh, so yeah, we can do 18 lands here. I think I would. One of the things that's kind of cool about Invasion of Ikoria here, now that I think of it, is we could go all in with this card if I have a Shadow the Source in hand. I could just straight up cast this thing for two mana and not grab anything. If I have Shatter the Source in hand that I know I can Convoke pretty early, play a Shatter the Source like turn 4 during my opponent's end step to just blow up Invasion of Ikoria and have an 8-8 on board that they can't block pretty much. So that's kind of fun. I like the synergy going on in the red-green deck as well with Shatter the Source with Invasion of Ikoria. It does make that card stronger. Kind of talking myself into this deck, which I don't think is super fair because I didn't look at the blue-black deck as much as I looked at this deck. So I certainly want to take another look at that. So yeah, I'm going to take a screenshot of this real quick. And we'll take another look at blue-black. Kind of try to think of the two side by side, compare them side by side, see which is better. I like the curve in this deck better. There's less interaction, but I like the interaction in this deck better than what I had in the blue-black. The deck feels more consistent, but a little less powerful. But these are certainly the two ways to go. We don't have any mana fixing in the sealed port pretty much at all. We have one Kami of Whispered Hopes, and that's it. I didn't get Invasion of Zendikar. I didn't get the Blighted Burgeoning in green. Obviously, I didn't get any Skittering Surveyors in colorless. My dual lands don't really help too much. I have two of them total, and they're not great color combinations. Yeah, I think it's straight up. It's this green-red deck or that blue-black deck. So we'll take a look at that blue-black deck again. 
and make our decisions here. So taking a look at the blue-black deck again, we certainly have a little bit of a higher power level when it comes to the top end. Like the best cards in this deck, I think are a little better than the best cards in the other deck, because again, Hedetsugu Kairi plus Broodlord plus Invasion of Amonkhet being all fantastic. There's a higher disparity between the power level of the best cards and the power level of the worst cards, though, in this deck. There's certainly more variance. Like, the filler cards in this deck feel a lot more filler than the filler cards in our red-green deck. Like, Traumatic Revelation, um, Order of the Mirror in a deck that doesn't really care about knights. Um, Oculus Whelps without a lot of things to flip. Our removal is definitely a little worse on curve, like failed conversion. Vanquish is fine, but Stasis Field is also kind of awkward there. Dispersal's great. Render Nert with two battles is fine. Could be a little awkward. Uh, but then again, like, the lookouts don't look fantastic. They look fine. Cryptomancer, Etched Familiar, and Aetherborn all look kind of whatever. The Cryptomancer being great late game but not doing much early. The deck just feels a little more mix-matched, you know? Like a little more high variance where we could have some really, really jank hands and just jank curves. But we could also just have super explosive stuff. I feel like the other deck is still capable of explosive stuff every now and then, while just being much more consistent the majority of the time. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to go with the red-green deck. It's, it's not way better than the blue-black deck. I think it's really close. I think there are upsides and downsides to both. But I do prefer that red-green deck by a small margin here. So I think that's what we're going to build. That's what we're going to roll with today. Let's load it back up here. I guess, yeah, looking at the deck again, this is without the lands in here yet. Um, the other thing that Blue Black definitely has over this deck, uh, it's got more two mana plays, like a little bit more of them, but some of them are like traumatic revelations, which just doesn't matter that much. Um, but the main other thing, outside of being slightly better at the top end with the bombs, is it has more card advantage. There's a lot of just like, opponent discards a card, you draw a card, uh, draw a card, and then eventually make a 3-3, stuff like that. But we're not for a complete lack of card advantage here. Obviously, Kogel and Yadaro can 2-for-1. Invasion of Ikoria could 2-for-1. Um, but the Wildwood Escorts will always 2-for-1, so that's kind of our, our card advantage spell in this deck, which is a fine card, but not as good as the card advantage in the blue-black deck. Still like this deck more, but just saying that's another maybe flaw of this deck or plus side of the blue-black deck for sure. Anyways, let's get these lands back in here, go through our deck overview. Alright, so here's a look at the deck I'll be playing for the Martian Machine Arena Open Day 1 event. We're on a green-red mid-range deck here. Not really a green-red ramp deck. We didn't open a lot of ramp, just a commie. Not really a green-red aggro deck. We only have two two-mana creatures. It's this weird mid-rangey in-between, but that's what a lot of decks in this format are, especially in sealed. We've got a lot of powerful stuff going on in this deck. The main thing we're trying to get to late game being, of course, Kogla and Yadaro. To finish things off, we can get there either by casting themselves or by finding them off of an Invasion of Ikoria if we make it to 8 mana. So we do want to hit a lot of lands, and without any ramp in here outside of the Kami, we are going to be playing 18 lands to help get there. We've got Invasion of Mercadia, which is solid card filtering. We can discard one card to draw two, so we can use that if we're flooding out, or if we've got one of our expensive cards in hand and need to draw more lands. So I think Invasion of Mercadia can put in a lot of work in this deck, where it's solid on the front half and obviously always pretty insane if you can flip it to the back side. We've also got the Invasion of Ikoria being absolutely absurd if we can flip it. If we play this late in the game, we're always going to get Kogla and Yadaro, which is a large creature that can attack it for 7 to try to flip it. But we also have a 6 damage instant that can shoot a battle, 
So being able to flip a Zalortha with that could also be absurd. So lots of big ways to close out the game between the Kogla, the Invasion, even a Shivan Branch Burner, a big old 5-5 Tangled Skyline. And until then, a couple creatures early on the curve, not a ton of them. Hanger Scrounger can give us some more card filtering, which helps with the 18 land deck when we're flooding out. And at 4 mana is where we just have a chunk of basically 4 mana 4-4s four at worst. Uh, Kavu's like a 4 mana 4-4, four, four. Converter Beast can be a 5-5, five, five. the Hermit's a 4-4, four, four. Umori is a 4-5, Geoderm basically works as a 4-4 four, four, and it's better against battles. So a lot of chunky creatures in the middle of the curve to try to win some games just by having bigger creatures than our opponents as well. Some Wildwood Escorts late in the game for card advantage, maybe recast uh, a solid creature like Umori or Converter Beast or something if we're really lucky, recast a Kogla and Yadaro or an Invasion of Mercadia that's been killed uh, by picking one of those up to our hand. So some good card advantage, some good value there. And some decent removal. Volcanic Spite, Cosmic Hunger, Shatter the Source as the main removal spells, but also an Arachnoid Adaptation, a combat trick that we could leverage as removal in the right position. So that is the deck we'll be playing today. Don't think it is incredible, but I also don't think it's terrible. We've got bombs at the top end, we have an okay curve, and we've got good removal. We've got a little bit of everything that you need, so definitely looks like a fine place to be for the Arena Open Day 1. Without further ado, let's head into the gameplay and see how it does. Here we are in Game 1. Kind of an awkward hand here. If we can hit one land, Kami Whispered Hopes can get us out of this mana situation no matter what land it is. We're on the draw. We have three turns to hit a land. It could be any land in our 18 land deck. If it's a mountain, we're definitely fine with Hanger Scrounger. If our opponent's super aggro, we could have issues with only two early game creatures, but it's not going to happen a lot in sealed. I think I am going to keep this. Trying to get one of our 16 lands left in the first few turns, and we did immediately get the mountain, so we are gonna be fine. I'm gonna play the Kami of Whispered Hopes before the Hanger Scrounger so that we can get the additional plus one plus one counter effect off of it. Skyclave Aerialist. So our opponent does start with a two mana, two one flyer, so a pretty aggressive start from them. Definitely not a fan because we're going to have to spend our Arachnoid Adaptation to kill that. We don't have any Reach or Flyers in our hand until very late in the game with the Branch Burner. So they're going to send in for two. We're down to 18. No play on turn three. They could have the Counter Spell or a Burn Spell or something like that. Can't really do anything about that. We'll drop our Kami. Hope for the best. Resolves for now, but it might get burnt by a Cosmic Spite. Or whatever that one's called, Volcanic Spite. Rampaging Raptor, well. It is quite an aggressive rare there. 4 mana 4-4 four, four trample with fire breathing as well. We have not drawn any of our removal. We're going to need to do a lot to survive here. Maybe Tangled Skyline, gain a bunch of life, and then flip a 5-5 five, five to block that. For now, we Hanger Scrounger Adaptation to kill the Flyer. I could Hanger Scrounger Adaptation to kill the Raptor, but then I keep taking the flying damage. I suppose the Skyline does give us a Reach creature. We kind of need them to have no more interaction here. Or this is going to be a bad time. Worst part is a 3-2 body on the ground doesn't impact this board pretty much at all, so they don't have to spend their removal until I attempt to combat trick. Then they can respond by blowing up my creature if it's another Volcanic Spite. I guess I... Well, because it has Trample, it doesn't matter if I block it first. Okay, I was gonna say, usually you're supposed to block first, then use the trick that way if they do removal spell in response. Um, 
I still stop the damage, but since it has trample, if they removal spell in response to adaptation, I just take all of the damage anyway. Yeah, Fara's Dispersal. This is a very good sealed pool. Two premium pieces of interaction. Premium evasive creature and a premium aggro card. All four of those cards are cards I would have been happy to first pick so far in a draft. All right, we found the bad card. Trailblazing Historian, but they milled it instead of played it, so still real far behind now in Invasion of Mercadia. There's Cosmic Hunger, a little too late. Guess I do have the mana to play Scrounger and Hunger, but I can't kill Rapture with that, which means they just kill me with the Raptor. If they play one land, they can double buff it into being eight power with Trample. Could Invasion of Ikoria for anything that costs three or less. I don't think we have anything that affects the board that much for that mana cost. We have Harried Artisan, Wary Thespian, Kenra Spellspear. None of those will work for us. We could Skyline to gain five. Puts me to 11 against six power. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They put me to one if they double buff Raptor after a land, but I'm still technically alive. I think that's the only thing I can afford to do here. Because if I just go Hanger, Scrounger, Cosmic Hunger, I can only kill Aerialist. I can try to block Raptor. They can make it 8 power, which tramples over for lethal. They double buff. Yeah, this is the only line we have. And if they can't find a way to get lethal this turn, they could just flip the Invasion of Mercadia instead to be able to go wide with its discard effect. Get two one ones, buff the whole board with plus one plus oh, kill me off that. There's a preening champion. Another pick one packable, pick one pack oneable draft card. The best common in the format. It's just a very, very, very good sealed pull from our opponent here. With a great aggressive curve. Oh, I totally forgot the bonus text on Raptor means they get to flip the invasion without even attacking it. All right. I don't think there's anything in our deck that can survive this board state. Well, Koga and Yadara is probably the card that gets the closest, but we can't even cast it. I am one mana off. Need another mountain. But yeah, even that we would die because we'd kill the Raptor and then they just flame right. Whole board gets plus and plus O and they have two more two ones. So they have three two ones, a three two flyer. And another 3-2 flyer? Yeah. Even if I can do that, we'd be dead. We can flip a 5-5 five, five and have three mana left. Flip a 5-5, five, five, play a Scrounger. That's two blockers. The 5-5 five, five is flying. Well, is reach. But I'd have to block the Raptor with it. Stop the trample. But then they could still double buff and trample over. So maybe it would be better to just flip that in Cosmic Hunger instead of flip plus, plus Scrounger, which means flip that. Block a flyer. Cosmic Hunger Raptor, that's dead on board even if they don't activate Flame Right. Alright, we could scoop here, but it is an arena open event, so we'll play it out and see if they just dramatically misplay. But I think we're on Flip the Incubator and cast Cosmic Hunger. If they somehow don't find the very easy lethal... Then we could hit a mountain in Kogla Yadara next turn to try to stabilize. Because if they don't hit lethal here, that means we'll be killing two of their creatures, one with our Incubator and one with our Cosmic Hunger. They don't attack with Raptor. They still find lethal though. Because I can block one flyer, shoot the other one, and take six. So, all right. 0-1 oh, to start it off. Just an incredible aggressive curve from our opponent with a ton of high power cards there. Alright, here we are on the play for game number two. Get a turn to Kenra Spell Spear. That feels pretty nice. They do have the Realm Breaker's Grasp for it. No creature to play this turn. Could Invasion of Mercadia. 
I don't know what I discard though, because I need to make it to five mana. I guess I could choose to discard nothing, but that's definitely not the play. Suppose I do discard a land here. Discard a forest, because I'm running ten forests, eight mountains. And I don't have any double green cards in hand anyway. Sure. All right, cool. We did get the replacement forest. Pretty lucky. Kitkin Billy Rider from our opponents. A 1 3 with double strike. I play a Chomping Kavu. That can just attack the invasion of Mercadia. They can't block with Billy Rider. Could also try to get a surprise trigger off of the backup. So they think that they've defended Invasion of Mercadia, and then I make it so the Hermit can't be blocked. That's probably a little better. Try to get the surprise flip on Invasion. I'd rather be able to hold Cosmic Hunger for something else. So if I can flip this Invasion without having to shoot it with Cosmic Hunger, that would be for the best. So Hermit into Chomp and Kavu for a counter on the Hermit feels like a decent way to threaten to flip the Invasion of Mercadia. If they fully kill the Not Volt Hermit, I think I'll be mana efficient, play my 5 mana way to reanimate it next turn. Uh, or to bring it to my hand next turn, because then I have a 3 3 on board that I can put the Kavu counter on to make unblockable. If they just pass, they are probably trying to use a combat trick on the Billy Rider to kill the Hermit or instant speed removal, either would make playing Chomping Kavu bad here, because pretty much any combat trick is going to be like plus two, plus two, the aerial boost thing. I guess there's the plus one, plus oh, indestructible card, but I feel like the plus two, plus two trick is more likely here. It's just much more heavily played since it has Convoke as well. Yeah, if I play Kavu and the instant speed removal, the Hermit, that's bad. If I play Kavu and they give this plus two, plus two, that's bad. I think I play Artisan and hold up Cosmic Hunger here. And we can use that in response to whatever nonsense they're potentially trying to pull off. And if they have nothing, we're still just like, they chump with Billy Rider here. They do have the plus two, plus two trick. All right. That is what I expected. So now we attempt to kill the Billy Rider, and unless they have two of that trick, this should work out. Oh, I should have chose Spell Spear. I forgot about Prowess. I could have chose the Spell Spear so that if they had instant speed removal, they could have uh, they would have just killed the Spell Spear. All right, double trick definitely sucks for us, but we couldn't really do anything about that. I suppose I could have just shot Invasion instead. But it is low enough now that Chomp and Kavu on Artisan will flip it. Well, depending on how much power this card has. Three power. Well, not guaranteed to flip it, but they have to Chomp block if they don't want it to flip. So I am still going to do this. Holding up the Adaptation for later. All right, no chump block. So we will flip that, and now we're having a swell time. We do have three cards in hand, but our board state is better as soon as we can clear this Kithkin Billy Rider off of it. I mean, Billy Rider is essentially like a 4-4 here. I guess it's already better. Invasion of Dominaria. Got to make sure they don't flip that, because if they do, then they will get a 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance, which is very nasty. Okay, they're going to try to flip it here. Really rather not lose my Flame Right. So I guess... I've got Wildwood Escort to pick up anything that dies, so let's go trade with Lancer and attempt to Adaptation to beat the Billy Rider. Yeah, 
and it does resolve. Feels good. Get to keep the Kieran Flame right, and they have no creatures on board now. That feels really good. Got one card in hand for Flame Right's ability, but I'd rather just spend all my mana on Escort right now. Probably pick up... I don't know, I like both of these a lot. I don't know what I pick up here. I've got other ways to use my mana, so I don't think I'm going to be spending the 5 on Hermit. I'll grab Chomping Kavu again. Because like 3 mana into the Flame right and 3 mana into Artisan feels like something that's going to happen, potentially. Potentially soon. And that'll just keep soaking up all my mana when I have extra. All right, two mana, two, two. Hey, Kogel and Yadaro. I guess we play that. I could trample in haste here. But I feel like just always getting the guaranteed kill is good. Even though all that could really do is chump. Just locking in the removal spell part is pretty nice. Vanquish the Artisan. Okay, hit for 6. They're down to 12. Could Chomp and Kavu my Kogel and Yadaro in the future? It's pretty spicy. Land, Sculpted Perfection. That does make a 3-3 three, three token, which means they can Chomp block through a Chomp and Kavu. There's Invasion of Ikoria. Pick up my Hermit? Doesn't give haste. They're just going to scoop it up. They're over it. We are 1-1 one and one now, heading into game 3. Alright, here we are for game 3 on the play. We have Spell Spear into Kami. See where we go from there. When it starts with a turn 1 Iker Drinker. Here's Kenra Spell Spear. Blight Reaper Thalid. That is a curve and a half. Guess I leave myself open to the prowess trick of Volcanic Spite here. How badly do I want to kill the Blight Reaper Thalid before they flip it? Badly enough to not play Kami this turn? Like it is badly enough to not play Kami this turn. Play the land pass. If they try to flip Thalid, we kill it. Probably just kill it now regardless. Not a ton of combat tricks in black or red. They could have the indestructible equipment. I can play at instant speed, but that's about it. I think I need to keep these because I want to be able to play Mercadia and Cosmic Hunger next turn if I want, rather than ditching a land right now. If I want to ditch a land, I can ditch a land later by discarding it to draw two. I could see ditching the Kami. It's not that good here, but it is my only other creature, which could matter. Dang. If I had another red source, I could Invasion of Mercadia and Beat Stick this turn to get the double prowess on Spell Spear to insta-flip the invasion if they don't have instant speed removal. So I think I discard the forest, hoping to hit a mountain to have the next red source. They've got something at instant speed. Hopefully it's just like unsealed in Acropolis or something. Mills each player two and returns some creatures to their hand. I think I will discard the Kami here looking for a mountain at this point. Okay, we do find a mountain. Let's see. Is it instant speed removal? Could be Vanquish the Weak. Now it can't be Vanquish the Weak. 
Could still be Final Flourish, Sacrifice the Iker Drinker, give minus six, minus six. It is Unsealed Necropolis, all right. They get an Etched Familiar and a Blight Reaper back to their hand, but we get to flip our Invasion, which is huge. If they don't kill this Flame right, we're just going to start ditching these extra lands to get more creatures out. Invasion of Eldraine. Good thing my hand is not valuable. Okay, there's another land. If I use Flame Rite right now, I won't have the mana to equip a Beat Stick to something. I could equip a Beat Stick and then have the mana to Flame Rite later, but Flame Rite's so much better to use pre-combat for the plus one plus O's. I guess I could flip Spell Spear and equip Beat Stick. I think I keep this land for Flame Rite later. So let's equip Beat Stick to Spell Spear, because Flame Rite's not always going to be attacking. This will guarantee we get a treasure. We can use that treasure to flip the Spell Spear right now. Or just hold up Cosmic Hunger. I think I'll just hold up Cosmic Hunger in case they try to buff the Drinker to flip Invasion of Eldrain. I guess they could flip it with a Volcanic Spite and Iker Drinker, but then I can just Cosmic Hunger the creature that it makes. The 2-2 Flyer that it turns into. Yeah, I like holding up Cosmic Hunger. Might get a little choked on man in the future, but... We'll see. Okay, another land. Uh... Prowess once with Spell Spear makes it three toughness, which isn't enough to flip familiar, or to survive familiar. If they block Spell Spear with literally everybody, it won't survive, even after I Cosmic Hunger, unless I just flip Spell Spear and attack with that instead of the one ones this turn. I guess I'll do that here. Well, I mean, I kill their whole board the other way. Yeah, no, this is fine. I'll kill their whole board if they try to kill Spell Spear here. And if they don't block it with literally everybody, I can make sure it survives. Okay, they didn't block it with literally everybody. So we're good. Kill the familiar, trample over, Spell Spear survives. They're down to seven. That being said, Thalid still being around means that uh, they could flip that for multiple blockers. All right, Kroxa gets rid of my land, that's whatever. Doesn't impact the board. They could, like, exile Iker Drinker and have two 2-2s two to block with. Oh, they can reanimate Croak, so that's still... So that's two creatures to block with. That's still dead if I discard anything, right? I think this is dead. Block, block, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess barely not dead? No, because this has Menace. They'd have to double block, die. Yeah, double block this and die, or they go block, block, and die. Yeah, they're dead. Cool, exact lethal. Alright, we are two and one now, heading into game number four. Here we are for game four on the play. Wary Thespian turn two, Harriet Artisan turn three. We hit more lands, we're gonna be topping the curve with a Tangled Skyline into Kogul and Yadaro. It's pretty massive. Definite keep. We've got the early game and the late game. All set up. Four out of six lands now. I will keep that. I do need another red source for Kola and Yadaro. Seed of Hope to start things for our opponent. Some good card selection. Gives them an Elvish Vat Keeper to play turn three. Here's a Streetwise Negotiator to trade into the Wary Thespian. 
Harried Artisan cannot attack into that. Two mana 3-3s three are kind of overstatted for the mana cost. They're pretty good. Send in the Thespian. We do get the trade. It did not Volt Hermit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 out of 6 lands. This fits into the curve really nicely. Still have several turns to hit land 6. Yeah, being able to play this and then Hermit next turn feels good. Uh, so I didn't play Artisan pre-combat there, because obviously it would just trump attack into the 3-3, three, three, and it might convince them not to trade the Thespian off. But this way they trade the Thespian off into the 3-3 three, three, so they don't have that solid blocker for our bigger creatures later. So we'll play our Hermit, pass the turn. Invasion of Zendikar. That is some phenomenal ramp and fixing. Our opponent has four colors of mana here. Green, blue, black, and red. And they hit it all naturally. They invasioned into double forest here. So they're kind of living the mana dream. They tangled Skyline here. Or a Arachnoid Adaptation. If I have to Arachnoid Adaptation, that just sucks. I think I just play Tangled Skyline. I mean, it doesn't suck. Uh, an Arachnoid Adaptation to kill Vatkeeper would be fine, but then it would keep me from using the rest of my format. I guess I could flip Artisan. It might have been okay to attack with Artisan. Just get two extra damage in most likely. I don't like the fact that if they blocked, I would have to um, Adaptation there. Oh yeah, I need to protect this invasion. Yeah, that was loose. Totally forgot Invasion of Zendikar is such a busted card that it also flips into a 4-4. It's just considering the front half value. Alright, first punt of the day, let's go. You can have my Artisan. Failed conversion and not Vold Hermit, okay. And come on, land. That is not a land. I need a land badly enough to Hanger Scrounger a counter on this 5 5. Discard adaptation, draw a card. Then I don't have a blocker up for Invasion of Zendikar again. I think I'd rather just play Adaptation. Hope they don't have an instant speed removal spell here. Of course. Yeah, that seems very good. Hello, Perlucranos in the four-color deck. Oh, well, that's why we're playing 18 lands. But I guess I'm dead. Certainly could have played this out better. Probably punted this one. Jesus Christ. Yep. Pretty loaded deck. You just flip Pelucranos and have a 6-6 six, six lifelinker out now. Okay. Could have killed the Vat Keeper, but that's it. I think I'd rather save this to go with Kogel and Yadaro. Or not. Play Chomp and Kavu. Chomp takes 7, go to 5. I mean, we're just dead. I'll play it out, but we're just dead. Well, I punted, but we might have still lost. Actually, probably would have still lost. Their deck seems absurd. They have two negotiators, too. It's 
overgrown pest which can draw Pelucranos and can draw Invasion of Zendikar. And we're still off land six. Yeah, that's really rough. All right. Some pretty bad punts there. Could have given us another turn or two to maybe get Kogel on board, but it seems like there was a pretty high power level deck from our opponent again. That was just some absurd stuff. We were going to have a really difficult time beating regardless. Gotta protect those battles. Super aggressive stuff from our opponent. Multiple two drops into the three drop flyer here. I'm gonna play Kami of Whispered Hopes. So when I play Scrounger and Skyline, I get extra plus one plus one counters. Invasion of Dominaria. All right, gotta make sure they can't flip that. Put it down to three. Skyline doesn't immediately impact the board, but they already can't attack with the two twos anyway. I guess next turn I could play Skyline and flip. Maybe I do play Scrounger this turn. I think I'm still just gonna play Skyline. Pass the turn, hope they do not have a combat trick to buff the gorilla into defeating the invasion. We don't have a faster way to get a reach creature down. Kite sail. That is pretty dang bad for us. I guess I can flip the Artisan for 3 life, and still have the mana to flip the token, then I have 2 blockers. Yeah, that's my only way to have 2 flying blockers for their 2 flying attackers. Whoa, don't auto-tap the Kami. I mean, I guess I could... But then I don't have the blocker on the ground. I need to block both flying creatures and the ground troop. But yeah, I can't afford to play Scrounger and flip the token here. It's under the gateway, so my Phyrexians don't have reach anymore. And they incubate too. Well, they still only have one flyer. We can't attack Invasion right now. But yeah, we are no longer blocking. Whatever they put the Kite Sail on. I guess we're just attacking with this then. Put a Beat Stick on it. Nothing to return with Escort. Where do I want to put two plus one plus one counters? I don't really want to stack it all up on one card here. Make whatever removal spell they have incredible. I might just make this a 3-3. Three, three. The Kami. I could also just go for a 4-3 Hanger Scrounger. We'll do that. Spread out those stats. Kite Sail the Butcher, send them both in. Kill the Gorilla, because Butcher has an ability in the grave. That could put a creature from their grave on top of their library if they mill one, but it might just do nothing when it dies. 
Oh, can put a battle on top. Could put Invasion of Eldraine on top if they want. They are not going to do that. All right. Get their 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance. We've got a Volcanic Spite. Not big enough to kill it. Oh, they milled a Kogla and Yadaro to pick up with Wildwood Escort? Don't mind if I do. One, two, three, four mana right now. If I play a forest, that's five. If I hit with this, that's six afterwards, which means I could play Kogel and Yadaro immediately if this hits them. Could attack with Scrounger, but I don't want to discard and draw right now. But I guess I could do that and just choose not to discard. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have six mana after I do this. Which is incredible. <laughs> They're just gonna scoop them up. Don't like the fact that they milled the Kogla and Yundaro. They're not a not a big fan of that. We're gonna be three and two now, heading into game number six. All right, here we are for game six. We're not playing a creature for quite a while here, and the only removal spell in hand costs six mana. So if our opponent just plays a creature, turn one, turn two, turn three, any two of the first three turns, we're going to be very far behind. I think I need to mulligan this. This is significantly better. We've got a two drop, three drop. We've got our bomb late game. I think I ditched the forest and hope for Beamtown Beatstick to put in a lot of work, but I could also ditch the scrounger. Beat stick on spell spear means kind of like four mana. I could also ditch the beat stick because if they just have cheap removal for my creatures, it's not going to be producing any mana. I don't think I ditch a land here. I think it's beat stick or hanger scrounger. In magical Christmas land, beat stick onto spell spear means we get treasure and dump Kogli Yadaro out early. But again, it's going to play poorly against removal. I'm going to try to live in Magical Christmas Land, though. We'll do this. I know I can Spell Spear on 2 and then turn 3 Beat Stick Equip. Or I could just play Beat Stick turn 1, but then it doesn't get the Prowess trigger on turn 3. Probably still worth it in case I hit another 2-mana card like a Cosmic Hunger or Volcanic Spite that I want to be able to cast. Turn three. Oh, we've hit all our lands for Kogla. I guess I need another red source. Do I need to get one treasure? Skittering Surveyor, all right. We can beat stick into that. Do they get a third color? They do. They're going to grab a forest. Call me of Whispered Hopes. I can't play that and the treasure from beat stick. I can choose one way or the other to ramp up here. I guess this way does more damage and ramps up. I think it's a little better. Yeah, and they can kill the Kami, but they can't kill the treasure token, sure. There's their own Kami of Whispered Hopes. Send in the Surveyor. Drawn to Chomp and Kavu. Probably just going to run out of Kogla and Yadaro blowing up Kami of Whispered Hopes here. Seems fine. Alright, that's a lot of power toughness on the board. They have five mana up though for removal. And there it is, Deadly Derision on Kogla and Yadara. We've still got the Spell Spear here putting in work. Five mana total. Can't play Kavu and Kami here. Could flip the Spell Spear and play the Kami. Post combat. Seems fine. And 
they're down to 10. Next turn, if they don't interact with this, I can put two counters on it, make it pretty much completely impossible to block and deal six. If they do interact with it because it has ward two, it probably takes all their mana. Okay, play a bonded herd beast. Yep, Chomp and Kavu will make this completely unblockable here. And then I'll have the mana to play the Hermit post-combat as well. Because this it has Menace, so they have to block it with two creatures, but it also can't be blocked by Skittering Surveyor, so they can't block it with two creatures. Yeah, this looks really good. This whole board state. And flip Hermit to being a 5-5 five, five, and attacking and making Tromp and Kavu a 5-5 five, five, or Kami of Whispered Hopes a 5-5. Five, five. So I attack with a 6-5 Trample Menace and two 5-5s five, and a 3-3 three, three that's hard to block. Hello, Elspeth. That might be enough. Elspeth and another blocker. Ooh, adaptation's big. Uh, with adaptation, I just think math is for blockers, if I have adaptation. I don't think we need to worry about killing Elspeth, we're just trying to kill them. Math is for blockers. We would have had to think a lot more if I didn't just top deck adaptation here. What do they have? They have a Convoke spell, Collective Nightmare. Maybe? And say, if it was a Rachnoid adaptation of their own, they just wait to do that till post-combat. So all I could think of would be Convoke spells that they'd want to cast here. And again, if it was a Convoke combat trick, they could wait till after they declare blocks. So it might be a Collective Nightmare that they have here. So what happens if they have Collective Nightmare? They can't Collective Nightmare my Gitaxian Spellstalker. So I could make it 8, 9, 10 power against 6 Toughness, which tramples over for 4. I think I buff the Spellstalker with, with Arachnoid Adaptation to play around Collective Nightmare. But they would still go to 1 if they Collective Nightmare the Chomping Kavu. If I do that. Because they would gain 1 life from the lifelink still. And then take um, 4 damage. I think that's fine, though. That's certainly a lot better than if I try to Adaptation the Kavu, and they Collective Nightmare that. And it's still fine if they do the plus two plus two trick against Spellstalker, then they still don't kill Spellstalker. Okay, yeah, this is just the play, 100%. All right, they're just going to scoop them up. They do not have Collective Nightmare, so we are going to be four and two. Heading into game number seven. Here we are for game seven on the play. I've got both my colors. The lack of early creatures is really, really bad in this hand. A five drop and a seven drop for creatures. I guess I can Invasion of Mercadia, Discard, Adaptation, or Beat Stick to draw two. Try to look for creatures off that. Tremendously close to a mulligan, but I think I'm trying to get Invasion of Mercadia to put in a lot of work with this hand. I think I'll discard Adaptation, because I can just run out Beat Stick on one, then play Mercadia, discarding Adaptation. As the line, I could also discard the Branch Burner, potentially. Let's see what we draw here. If I hit a land, I think I'd just rather discard Adaptation in a hand with no early game creatures. So Scrounger is a creature for Beat Stick and Adaptation. Could also help Convoke the Branch Burner.
I think I discard the branch burn. If I really want it, I can Wildwood Escort it later. Oh my god. All right. Two more non-lands. Ten cards deep, two lands. Come on, 18 land deck. Let's go. Traumatic Revelation. I don't really care about any of these that much. They should probably just get the 3-3. Three, three. I guess they get rid of Hanger Scrounger is the most valuable card to me. The hand like this. Kill the Harried Artisan. Okay. That is fine by me. We'll play the Hanger Scrounger. Did hit the land there, which is very nice. They're on blue-black. There's a Skyclave Aerialist for our opponent. If they do not have a one-mana trick here, we're about to flip Invasion of Mercadia and go to town from there. I'm going to keep this hand at this point, now that we've got the treasures getting produced. We can cast pretty much all this stuff soon enough. They have four mana up now. And they're just going to flip the Aerialist. All right, another great attack out of Scrounger next turn then. Can Invasion of Ikoria for four right now? Scrounger's going to get me a fifth mana. Not quite on Invasion for six. I could flip Invasion if I attack it and Arachnoid Adaptation. That'll play poorly if they have like Deadly Derision or something to blow up the 8-8, but if they don't, we kind of just kill them. And even if they spend their turn Deadly Derisioning our 8-8, we can Wildwood Escort it next turn. I kind of like just flipping this thing. We have to spend a Treasure Token on the Adaptation. So I can do this for three. Do I have a better three drop in my deck than this Artisan in my grave? Call me Whispered Hopes. That's the only one. I can get my Spell Spear. I think I'll just take the Harried Artisan out of the grave for the three. Oh, a non-human? Oh my god. Okay, thankfully it lets me choose either. Okay. Now I can grab Kami then. I guess I'll grab Kami. Since it's the most expensive creature and it helps the mana for Borborygmos off Invasion of Ikoria next turn. Alright. So let's just flip this thing. I am so glad that it, it works the way where I could just then choose my deck instead if I realize that it's non-human. Ooh, that would have been bad. Just get no creatures off of it when I cast the front half. All right, do they have removal for Zalortha? Because if no, then they're dead. Not immediately, but pretty much guaranteed dead. And if they do have removal for it, we just escort it back to hand and keep hitting them, because it's probably going to take all their mana to kill it. It's an 8-8, so it would have to be something that can kill any creature like Deadly Derision can. Temporal Cleansing. Put it back into our deck. That'll work. Yeah, and I can't Wildwood Escort against that. Still get to hit pretty hard, though, and I'll just redraw it and try to get Borborygmos off of it. Or not Borborygmos. Kogla. The big monkey. I'm getting my massive Gruul threats mixed up. Oh, hey, Wildwood Escort number two. I guess I can play the first one for Shiv and Branch Burner, and they might think I don't have any more, which is kind of nice, potentially. I could also discard off the Scrounger and draw the Ikori immediately, but I think just knowing I have it next turn is fine. Um, could also discard the Escort to the Flame Rite, but then I attack with two two ones, they kill one. Doesn't feel that exciting. Let's escort back a branch burner, I think. That feels fine. 
They have for two mana, a black and one if they convoke. Could have a green or a blue off the convoke. I can't think of any convoke tricks that have to be just a one black mana spell. I don't think there's any that are going to kill this. So threaten the combat trick. They probably just block anyway, but I'm not going to use flame right right now. And I don't think there should be any tricks that can kill flame right here for one mana in this format. All right, pick up a branch burner. Pass the turn. And I do have the mana to Invasion of Ikoria for Kogla and Yadaro next turn. Corrupted Conviction, sack a creature, draw two. Probably digging for a board wipe here. I'm about to ruin my opponent's day. Oh no, I'm actually I'm one mana off without my mana dork. Never mind. Not quite. But if I Invasion of Ikoria for... Kogla and Yadaro, I can choose to give them Trample Haste and then attack it and flip it immediately if our opponent board wipes. I don't have the mana to do that, though. I'm one mana away. Could get a 5 drop. Could get Rampaging Geoderm here. Seems like a pretty fine option. Still have a potential branch burner in the future. Oh, we were one man away from doing something so incredible. The insta-flip invasion of Ikoria. They have the two blockers against the beat stick, but I can make Geoderm a 5... F a 6-5. They would win that combat. They wouldn't win that combat, but they would still trade. Uh, but I would flip invasion. If I attack now, they double block, I only hit it for one. I guess I gotta put Beat Stick on it, so I guaranteed Flip Invasion here. Even if they double block, I trample over. They might just let it flip, keep Gorilla on board for attacking their Invasion of Fiora. Pick up a Skyclay Very List off Gorilla if they trade. All right, they're going to trade. We'll still flip the invasion, clear out the board. Did I just flip Kogla? Yeah, I did. Probably Wildwood Escort time then. They're going to put their 2-1 flyer back on top of their deck. We're going to get Solortha onto the board. Pick up Kogli Yadaro. If I top deck a land, I can play them here. If I don't top deck a land, I'll have to get some beat stick treasures going. So there's Skyclave Aerialist. And immediately flip it, okay. One mana, two mana up, one card in hand. Don't top deck the land. This is 11 damage guaranteed with Solortha's ability. They're just going to scoop them up. We've got too much stuff going on. But I am going to think it out and try to play my best in the competitive event here, so... Don't feel bad about taking my time, even when I'm in a pretty firm lead in a super competitive event like this. We're going to get our next victory, and we are going to be 5-2, and two, which I 
think means we get some amount of our gems back no matter what happens here, which is pretty nice. Yep, we, <laughs> we get one-fifth of our gems back no matter what. So two potential wins away from making it to day two, but no matter what, getting at least five wins in this event does feel pretty good. That does feel pretty nice. Um, still feel pretty bad about our second loss. I think I played that game pretty badly. I had one major punt, and then a lot of my lines, I think I was just too aggressive, should have just been statically holding creatures back against the battle. My first attack with the battle on the board was a huge punt. My next ones were greedy, but not uh, a super clear punt there. So we do end up losing this event. Game two, I think, would be the game that we were most likely to have a chance to turn around had I played better. Not game two, but loss number two. This hand is slow but powerful. I'm not doing anything till turn four, though. I think I mulligan this one. I guess we're on the draw. It gives us some time to hit some early plays. But being on the draw also means our opponent's going to curve out faster than us. So if they do have the early plays, we'll get beaten down a lot. Okay, we'll mulligan this one. This is better. Drop Skyline. Keep as many lands as possible for Kogli Yadaro. Get a Thespian down early. Invasion of Brocade to set up draws here. I might get rid of Invasion of Arcadia, because I can surveil two times with this, which kind of, sort of, sets up draws. I don't think I'll be flipping this. We're on the draw, and we're going to have one cheap creature to potentially attack it with. I think I'm going to ditch Invasion of Mercadia with this hand. More all-in on the late game. Well, if I knew I was going to top-deck Artisan, I'd be a little more excited about Invasion of Mercadia. Thespian into Artisan does give us a good amount of stats on board. We'll still be fine. We've still got good big plays, even if we're not trying to flip a battle. So, drop Thespian. We're at four out of six mana. We're looking for another mountain, though, ideally. Rampaging Geoderm. No battles in hand. This is a four mana. Attacks as a four, four blocks as a three, three. Not the most exciting. I think I need lands badly enough to just mill that. All right, Skittering Surveyor, turn three from our opponent. Do hit another land, but we need another red source still. Just hold Artisan as a blocker. I guess there's not really a reason to attack with Thespian either, even though I do want to Surveil again. I think I would rather trade it off on blocks than on attacks. Invasion of Ikoria, that's a very good card to have access to. Just gonna hold on to it here, because if we make it to eight mana, we can pick up Koglin Yodaro from our graveyard later. Could spend the mana into flipping Artisan, that'd be okay. Probably should have. The two life doesn't really matter. We just had a three, four flyer here. Strobe Knight is a really big deal, but we haven't drawn any removal outside of Kogla Yadaro, so we're going to give them a turn to use that and then try to fight it with Kogla Yadaro next turn. Yeah, I really should have flipped this Artisan. I don't know why I didn't. That was kind of a punt there. I didn't have any instants to hold up. I guess I was threatening to discard Kogla Yadaro to kill something. That's obnoxious. Well, I guess I can finally flip this because I've got nothing else to do with my mana. tapped out for branch burner but I like flipping the 3-4 and a 5-5 five, five reach instead
All right, show me the two mana counter spell. They certainly did. They certainly did show me the two mana counter spell. Oh, we weren't going to make it to 10 mana for about a century, so it's not like I could play around that. Start shipping with the 3 4 here, maybe. I'd rather just start shipping with the branch burner. Turn from now. I tap Thespian. I'm going to be taking a hit from Mind Slinger, which is bad. I'd like to be able to trade Thespian into that, so I think I tap down the Sky Flayer or the 5 5 here. They have a bunch of counter spells. They're just going to take a firm control of this game, like Artistic Refusal and stuff like that. I assume they don't have Artistic Refusal, because that would have been a very good time to have it. Final Flourish. The Reach creature to be able to flip Invasion of Eldraine is fine. I guess they get to cast two spells here, which is not great. Well, they don't cast two spells. All right, yeah, it's fine for them to have that flyer on board, especially when we draw into Volcanic Spite. Now... I think I buff one of these flyers. Your main decking change the equation? I guess I'll get got. Okay. One of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Take four damage a turn from fairies, but Strobe Knight could spit creatures out. This thing has Vigilance too. I hit them for seven a turn. They have to play card draw to play two spells in one turn from now on. We'll let them do their Vigilance stuff and kill the fairies. Just really outrace them on board. They're down to nine. And the top deck war begins. Aetherborn's a beautiful start. We don't get to trade into Mind Stinger, so they draw a card off of it if I don't chump block. And Surveil. I'll trade Thespian into a card draw for them. Now I have to trade this into the Mind Stinger to stop them from drawing an extra card every single turn. Our top deck war is land, land, land. Our opponent's is Lifelinger to buff the 3-1 to 4-4, four, four, one land, then a draw two spell that gives them another piece of card draw, so two spells in one turn, and an extra draw. We've got a Spell Spear as our first non-land card in the top deck war. I guess it's a 3-3. Three, three. Trades into the Aetherborn, take four a turn, they take three a turn, they're winning that race if I get in. Um, we've still got both of our Graveyard Recursion cards in our deck, those would be incredible draws here. Probably our biggest outs are our two Wildwood things. Oh, there's one of them. 
Will it resolve? I've got the four mana up for Assimilate Essence. It will. I'm going to pick up Invasion of Ikoria and then pick up Kogliadaro off of that. Because I get the double up off of doing that. Light Reaper Thalid is pretty solid. They haven't played a card in a little while, so they're probably holding a second spell for the Strobe Knight. Alright, flip the Thalid. Send in the Aetherborn, sure. Combat Trick is the second spell, sure. Cyber Cryptomancer, fair enough. Although they did just spend their Cyber Cryptomancer when they know I'm gonna play. Koglin Yadaro, so that's a little weird. Well, I could also just choose Branch Burner instead and flip this immediately, then kill them next turn. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all as if it's not blocked. They gain four first. Actually, if I don't die next turn, then this does kill them. So if they just draw a land, and picking up Branch Burner means they die next turn, so I do that instead. Alright, if they draw dead, then they are dead. Here's our 8 8 Zalortha. Invasion of Kamigawa, I guess they're not dead. They can insta-flip that, too. Uh, untap combat trick, let's go. That's not that. Eight attackers. We could have six blockers, but I can only have two in the sky. I guess only two of their attackers are in the sky. Could still kill them the turn after this. Is this a dwarf? None of my creatures are humans. Yeah, could still kill them the turn after this. Pass through here if they draw dead again. Well, again. They did not draw dead last turn, but you know what I mean, draw dead another time. They've drawn dead on turns before this. We attack back for 25, and they can't stop any of it. This game ended up being really close, and we had one really obvious punt early on where I didn't flip the Sky Flayer with nothing else to do with my mana. So it's quite likely if we lose this game that we might have gotten there had I flipped that Sky Flayer, so another pretty big punt today. Again, because if we lose, we're going to be like one turn from winning. Oh my god, that's probably lethal. That's probably why they thought so long, is they had to do the math here. Actually, that makes it so they don't die next turn, guaranteed. Well, not guaranteed. We've got to shatter the source for 6 damage to the not a player. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Wait, no, they die. 7? If I kill the lifelinker, they die. Four, five, six, seven, plus eight, 15, plus four, 19, 20, 21, 22. This should kill them. Whew. Definitely makes up for our few land draws at the start of this top deck war. I think that's just dead. All right. Take it all, and we are going to be 6-2. and two. Another game with a pretty big punt there, I think. No, I, I definitely lost <laughs> the first game where I had some huge punts. But we did get the victory there through that pretty big just not flipping our creature punt. Really good stuff from our deck. The uh, Wildwood things, Wildwood Escorts. Really, really, really being clutch in that game. I guess I only hit one of them, but still the one Wildwood Escort in the end game was so good, and they've been playing really well in some of these other games, so 
Whatever happens, we made it to the final boss. We are 6-2, and two, heading into the final game of the Arena Open Day 1 event. Win or lose the final game of Magic for today's video. See how it all... See how it all goes here. See how the cookie crumbles. Final game of Magic. Well, I like the start. We know we have incredible late game plays, so any hand that has a good curve starting off is a great way to start the game. Because that means we're going to be doing great stuff early and probably drawing into great stuff late eventually. We'll start with Wary Thespian on 2 to set up our draws. It's going to be a Converter Beast. I already have a 4-drop, so I'm going to just dump that. It's a 4-drop with more immediate impact on the game as well. Our opponent's going to play a Forest into a Portent Tracker. Don't love trading Thespian off into that, so I think I'll put a Scrounger counter onto it to be mana efficient, because if I just try to Adaptation in response to them blocking... Uh, I'm not going to be spending all three mana this turn. Uh, I could discard the Artisan, seeing as I already have a 4-drop and Adaptation could be helpful during combat. I think I'm okay with that, and then use Scrounger to discard any extra lands in the future is fine. Geoderm is the draw, which is a pretty solid one. I don't think I'll be playing that immediately, but could be good in the future. I suppose it depends what they do here. They're on the full Jund. Black, green, and red hit naturally in the first three turns. Here's an Izumi Freewheeler for a 3-3 that mills us both. They milled some of my bigger cards, so I'm not a fan of that. I don't have the mana to play Adaptation and a creature here. I think I would rather play Kavu then, buff the Scrounger, discard the Forest draw a card, and uh, just offer the trades in here before they flip that into a creature that's too big to trade into. Okay, hit another Mountain. That's better than the Forest that we discarded, so I'll take it. They're down to 13, and we will surveil one. Another forest, I'll mill that. Next turn I can afford to play Geoderm and hold up Adaptation. We'll see what we draw. If it's another land, we'll just discard it to Scrounger again. Quintorius Loremaster is the play, 3-5 Vigilance. That's uh, actually super bad for us because it makes all these 3-2s to block with. Every single turn they make a 3-2. That is a huge roadblock. I guess every turn they can exile a non-creature from Graves, so they have to cast another instant or sorcery to do it, but that's pretty easy to do. All right, I think I have to put as much pressure as I can on their life total here by just running out Geoderm, sending in the squad. I think I am using Scrounger here to look for more impactful plays. And then Hermit would be Fine, but I'm trying to like dig for, yeah, Invasion of Ikoria and Kogla and all that stuff. Please block something with Quintorius. Thank you. Just let it through. Just, I mean, don't let the damage through. Just declare the block, finish off the block, confirm the block. I'm sending confirm block energy to my opponent. They're not confirming the block. This would be how we lose, is if they can keep Quintorius on board and keep getting three twos. I don't think I Adaptation then. Just hit for seven. I could Adaptation to save Kavu. Keep as many creatures on board as possible. Then I can dump all my mana into Invasion next turn for three or four. I can't get Harried Artisan with Invasion though. I could get Not Volt Hermit if I hit a land, or... Umori. Kami out of the deck or Spell Spear out of the deck. I mean, at this point, they just know about Adaptation either way. I guess I could still save it to maybe flip Invasion of Ikoria, though, as a win con. Maybe just Invasion for two and hold up Adaptation. But now it's, it's so obvious that I have it. Although I guess if I ever do six damage to Invasion, I would just do six to their face. So I guess it's just a win con if I can hit them for six if Geoderm ever is unblocked, but I'm assuming they have removal spell and to get a 3-2 here off Quintorius, and Quintorius is just going to take me all the way to town because I don't have removal for him. Send in for 3 with Vigilance. I could untap Adaptation and go for the block here, but that's pretty bad when they have 6 mana open. 
So I'm not going to do it. They're going to get a 3-2 off of that no matter what. They can keep Scrounger on board, discard, and draw with it. But then they've a 3-5, a 3-2, and a 1-1 one, one to block Geoderm. Yeah, we're not getting anything better off this adaptation. Quintorius is just hosing me. We needed removal to kill that, like, immediately. Get invasion for three mana. I have just no good attacks anymore. Could flip a spell spear, then when I play invasion, it's going to be 5-5. Five, five. It's a little something. They probably can't attack Quintorius into all three creatures. They could sack the spirit to final flourish. Is how Quintorius works, I think. Yeah, they could have sacked the spirit to final flourish the spell stalker, but they would have had to tap Quintorius, which would have given them pretty bad blocks. Doom Scar Warrior, that's a phenomenal rare. Whenever the creature they put a counter on damages us, they get to uh, dig four cards deep, draw a creature, or land. They have whatever combat tricks in the universe they want off of Portent Tracker here. Four powers, they kill one creature. Just do whatever combat trick you want. I'm not going to let them draw a card here. No combat trick. Two mana. Playing a spell again. Please don't play a spell again. Yet another 3-2. Sick. Another 3-2. Coming up from Quintorius. There's a Wildwood Escort. Chomping Kavu's alright. Shiv and Branch Burner is pretty scary. Probably take Shiv and Branch Burner. One mana away from convoking it off of just the Hanger Scrounger. And that could kill them in two flying attacks. Skittering Surveyor. Gives them a very expendable creature for the final flourish off of Quintorius. So we play Branch Burner, they sack the Spirit to Quintorius. Sack the Surveyor to the final flourish and kill the flyer anyway. Tangled Skyline. 5-5 five, five Reach does also kind of have to be dealt with, doesn't it? If I convoke out this Branch Burner, I only have one blocker up, which means they probably get a Doomscar attack in, trading into Geoderm. I think I'm just going to play Skyline for now. Since I didn't hit the land to just convoke off of one creature. And they're going to Corrupted Conviction here, sack two creatures, draw two. They get back to the bottom of their deck, it's going to be all their spells again. Alright, they are just going to pass back to their turn. Stormclaw Rager, that's very good with the Skittering Surveyor they've got down. They are immediately going to sack it, draw a card. They've still got the mana up for that final flourish, but they'd have to sacrifice a legitimate creature now to kill my Shivan Branch Burner. They'd have to sacrifice the Doomscar Warrior, or the Rager, to the Flourish right now. It's the three mana to play it off Quintorius, sacking the Spirit. Play Invasion of Zendikar. Okay, this is probably the turn we try to Shiv and Branch Burner, really hoping to hit another basic now. Play it more easily. But we can guarantee poke them down to two. Off of it. Let them flip the invasion of Zendikar and just keep trying to get there in the sky. Oh, well. I mean, I'll just kill all these then. They're tapped out. They could have the Convoke plus two plus two, I guess. Let's say I'm going to block here. Okay, we did hit the land. Beautiful. Because I'd rather not tap a lot of my creatures. Um, I guess I could flip the... 5-5 five, five, and tap these three, just have a 5-5 five, five up as a blocker. Because they're not going to hit me. They're just going to hit this invasion. So if I flip a 5-5 five, five blocker, I just kill their best attacker, let them have a 4-4, four, four, it's whatever. 
I kind of kind of do enjoy that. Tap three of these creatures so I can have two mana up for the 5-5. Five five. And yeah, if they attack the invasion too hard, then we just crack back with a wide board state. Oh, I put them to one. I forgot about Geoderm. That is massive. They're at one life. So if I hit them with anything, they're dead. Um, is this really how I die? 9, 18. Really? That's how we're going to end this arena open? I don't know if I could imagine a sillier way to die here. That's egregious. Well, that's March and Machine as a format for you. Six and three. I think I played out those last turns pretty correctly, but maybe we could have found another damage somewhere there earlier in the game. Biggest game that I played poorly was our second loss for sure. We could have played that a lot tighter. There were a lot of instances that could have changed the course of the game a bit. And if they all added up, maybe that game could have headed more in our direction, and that's where we could have found our seventh win. But that game was an uphill battle the whole time. Quintorius with no removal for it. That's probably the only card in the whole format that lethals us for playing the way I did on that last turn. Against the majority of other, of other cards, that's just the best play by far. Because we let them flip a 4-4 four, four on the ground, but kill their other creatures. If they don't have enough blockers, they're just going to die. And they might play in a way where they leave up exactly enough blockers. And then I can Invasion of Ikoria for a haste creature. Or a backup creature could help as well. City on fire, though. Go from taking, like, 8 when being at 20 to taking, like, 25 damage or something. I guess that ends my first attempt at the arena open day one, but I will try again at least one more time, but what a disheartening way to end it. I think this deck was pretty great. I think this played out better than our blue-black deck would have. I think our biggest flaws today were in gameplay, not in deck construction. I think the deck worked out how we wanted it to. Everything that we planned to work together worked together pretty well. The deck was quite solid. Overall, probably the best deck we could have built in this sealed pool. I think maybe we could have played some of those games a little tighter, finding one more damage in our third loss, or kind of just replaying the entirety of our second loss. That whole game we played too aggressively against the battles, we should have just been defending them as much as possible. But it is what it is, we can't go back, can't change it now. My aggro player heart went too hard in our second loss. And maybe a little not hard enough for our third. So that's going to do it. Six and three. We are down 2,500 gems to start it off, even with a very positive win rate in a super competitive environment. So six and three, super respectable run win rate rise. And uh, I like that record for this deck. If it was a normal sealed or draft event, I'd be pretty happy with this. But obviously, huge bummer not to make day two of the arena open. And huge bummer to just be down 2,500 gems for winning twice as many games as you lost. The arena open payout is brutal in day one. Well, that's going to do it for the arena open day one attempt number one, but I will make sure to try again at least one more time. And if we do make it into day two, then tomorrow we'll have the video up for the arena open day two draft one. If we make it through that, we'll have the arena open day two draft two the day after that. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. But other than that, as always, I'd like to thank my patrons very much for supporting this channel and thank you for watching. If you're interested in catching more videos like this, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more. 
If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But as always, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all again soon for some more Magic Arena.